Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of In Case You Missed It, episode 38 for those who are keeping count. If you are new to the show, the number of the episodes doesn't really matter. Um, my name is James, I am the host of this show. Normally I'm joined by someone, I wasn't last week and I'm not this week either, but feel free to go and tweet at Mr. TT Green, Tommy who um, tends to be with me, or Miles. Miles doesn't have Twitter so you can't tweet at him, but tweet at Tommy at Mr. TT Green if and ask him his opinion on any of these stories. Um, he couldn't be with us this week, so um, I'm just going to talk through this week's trailers, headlines, one big story, and then end on a little bit of box office before um, I end this week's show. Let's start with the trailers. Uh, the first trailer that we got was for The Banker, starring Samuel Jackson and Anthony Mackie. A really interesting story, and I'm, I'm actually really excited for this one. Are you when you've got two great people like Samuel Jackson and Anthony Mackie, it's kind of hard not to be excited for a film that they're in. Um, this one not being an action film, though, I think we've seen them in recent years do similar sort of films over and over again. I mean, Samuel Jackson kind of gets typecast. Uh, uh, similar now with Anthony Mackie since he's been in the Marvel films, he's kind of built his name up. But he does do these smaller sort of films um, more... Um, drama sort of films and I think that works and I think you're going to get a great performance from both of them it looks like in the trailer a really interesting story of um, these bankers that um, can't make it because the uh, it's set in a different time and because of the colour of their skin um, they need a white person to play by Nicholas Holt in this um, to sort of do the similar sort of thing as the, what they do in Black Klansman obviously not completely different sort of subject matter um but it still looks good i'm really excited for it and having not known anything about this before watching the trailer it really does get me excited it's a december release date for america so it's not too far away um I, i'm not actually sure if it i feel like i might have seen somewhere that it was a netflix film um but it did say at the end of the trailer that it was um coming into theaters uh, it might be a sort of thing as to where it uh, goes to different, depending on what country you're in. Let's have a look. Uh, it looks like it's it's going to be in theatres, so that's good. Um, oh, Apple TV. There we go. Um, but it's still getting a theatre release, so that's good to see. Um, but yeah, Apple TV. Um, I spoke spoke about it last week when I spoke about CS. I don't think there's enough there to get it but if they're uh, distributing these sort of films I think that's a great opportunity for them um, and they're still putting out stuff and this turns out great which it looks great I'm really excited for it um, two hour runtime, not a short deal run time this is the sort of stuff that Apple needs to be making they don't have the luxury of the big characters the char yeah the characters that anyone cares about they don't have any franchises of the run so they've really got to start to put different sort of content out that you can't find on Disney Plus which comes out um tomorrow in most parts of the country most parts or not most parts of the world but a few places in the world uh, particularly America where the first episode of the Mandalorian will come on and it seems to me that Apple TV has just kind of fallen aside a bit and putting out this sort of thing kind of puts it on the level of Netflix if that's the thing they're gonna they're obviously gonna need to put out a lot more to catch up with Netflix in that regard, but there's no library, there's no backlog of stuff that they've already got on Apple TV and that, I think that's where it's suffering. Um but this is great. This looks like the sort of thing that will get people if it's gonna be on in cinemas then great. I'm excited to watch it. Um if it goes straight to Apple T V then I probably won't get it watch it yet, but but it'll be a, a way off. Um I'm just gonna see. It doesn't have. A, it's not scheduled for a release date in the UK yet. Um, it's only got one for America at the moment. So we'll see how that goes and what the distribution for that in the UK. I really hope it is. It looks like a really interesting story. Uh, Samuel Jackson and Anthony Mackie look great. So I'm really excited to see that. Um, so that's a big yes from me for this trailer. The next trailer we got was for Bad Boys Three, Bad Boys for Life. Um, this trailer is a lot better than the than the first look that we got at it. I I can't remember what I said. I think I might have been a tentative. No, I was a little bit worried about it. 
Um, and I've, I don't know, I've spoken about it many times on, on this podcast that if this film does well, and obviously fingers crossed that it does, um, they've really missed an opportunity to uh, then make a fourth one called Bad Boys 4 Life. Um, so this makes me feel like this is the last, last one. And I know I think they've spoken about it multiple times, how hard it was to get this film going. Um, so I think that's kind of what made them think, oh, this will be the one, one I'm done, that's it. Um, and especially with the January release, that it doesn't look good. Um, but if it is, then it has a big gap in the market that um, when you've got films like Doolittle that are coming out around a similar sort of time um, and we're not hearing good things about that, I think it's got a real chance to do well with the box office and potentially go on. And I don't think Martin Lawrence would come back. I think he was part of the struggle. I think Will Smith could potentially. Um, again, that's difficult to say. Um that's things crossed is good. This trailer does look good. We've got a lot more action, a lot more laughs that work. You get a little bit more of the narrative as you tend to do in a second trailer. After like you get the first bit of just the dynamic between um, Martin Lawrence and Will Smith, seeing them back together and how strong that is and how good that works and how funny that is. Um, but once it gets into the action, the plot sort of side of it, a little bit more, you kind of get what's going on. And I think it really works and really sells this film a lot better than the first trailer. Um, I I believe it's I believe it is Sony, so that's probably why the we know I know how much we don't like Sony trailers. Um, but yeah, this is a yes for me. I'm actually more excited for the film now after this trailer. And um, yeah, had this been the first one, I would have been so much more on board with it. Um, I'm really excited to see see Bad Boys for Life now. I didn't think I'd say that after the last trailer. Um. The next trailer we got was more of a teaser for um, one of Pixar's films next year. We had the trailer for Onward a couple of weeks ago. Um, this one's just a little tease of a film called Soul that they've got coming out. They've got, they say in the trailer that it's from the um, company that made um, Inside Out, Up, and uh, Coco, which kind of makes sense. That's a similar sort of th- vibe you get from this trailer, uh, obviously telling the story of uh, well, since I think it's a music teacher who decides to quit his job and pursue his dream of being a jazz singer, um, starring Jamie Foxx as playing the main character and Tina Fey as well. I think it looks really interesting. I think it's got a lot of heart, and I don't know what it is. I think it's the, partly the music. I think it's uh, it's probably just a well done trailer. And Tizzy always make good trailers. Um, I I I don't know what it is, but I think it's going to be great. I'm, I actually have a lot more faith on this than being. I think Onward's going to be such a great journey um, and f- more fun and more for children. I think this one's going to really fill the gap for that adult audience. I think, children, as with any Pixar film, it's very important to, or a- any children's film, really to give the parents something that are watching this film, give them something to watch. And I think this is going to be, you're going to get Onward, which, which will be a little bit more silly, a little bit more fun typically um and that will fill it for the good you can see you can see it already with like chris pratt's character and tom holland's characters as well that there's going to be silly onward whereas soul has it has a bit more soul to the film um pun intended that i think it's going to be great and i'm really really looking forward to it i think inside out and up are typically some people's favorites of uh, Pixar and putting Coco in there because you're also going to get this music sort of side of it as well. I think it's great and I'm really, really excited for this. Um, and I'd love to see more. Um, I don't need to, but I'm really excited to see it. And of course, the animation looks incredible. I'm really, really excited for this. The next trailer we got was for The Invisible Man. This is an interesting one um, because The Invisible Man was supposed to be part of um, Universal's dark universe that they were building. I believe it was Johnny Depp that was going to be in the role. Um, but after Jack the Untold flopped and The Mummy flopped, um, they scrapped that and canned it all and put it all on the shelf. And uh, Lee Winnell comes along and says, I've got this script for The Invisible Man. Uh, a completely different sort of take to, of the story that you might know from the original Universal Monsters side of it and I think it's a really modern more horror sort of 
telling of the character. And I think that's really interesting. And what they do in this trailer is interesting about um, a woman played by Elizabeth Moss, who um, whose partner uh, kills himself, um, but leaves her £5 million if she can prove that she's not mentally uh, insane. And um, it's obvious that it's playing with that mental sort of side of it as to where is she seeing a ghost? Is anything actually happening? Or is this all in her head? Um, the title of the invisible man kind of gives it away and the trailer does give a lot away, but there's something about it where I think there might be more to it because I think it's really well done trailer given that it gives quite a lot away and most of the story away. I don't need to see anything else. I don't want to see anything else of this, but it looks really interesting. It's Blumhouse. I've got a lot of faith in them as a production company. They do a lot of really great stuff. I think my head went to Don't Breathe um, a couple of years ago, which did really well. Um, especially with audiences, loved it. And I think I think it's going to be a similar sort of vibe for, to it. And I think this might be a first as to where all yeses for each trailer. Um, I, I'm really interested to see all of the four films that we got the four big films that we got trailers for. There are other ones. Um, but nothing massive to talk about um, compared to these four being the biggest. And I'm really excited for all of them. Um, feel free to tweet at me or at Insider Network underscore what, which one of these was your favourite trailer of the week. And uh, perhaps uh, if there was yes or no, maybe there was some no, which one uh, would do it for you. Probably if I had to lean towards, no, it would probably be Bad Boys. Um, but that's probably using my bias towards it. Maybe the Invisible Man, just because it gave too much away. Uh, feel free to let me know or tweet at Insider Network underscore, and let's get a conversation going about these trailers. Um, the next uh, segment of the show is headlines, and it's another week, so we've got some more Batman casting rumors and um, announcements. The first one that we got, I, I saw this one first, I'm going to talk about it first, was rumour, it's, it's nowhere near as confirmed as the other two, um, is that Matthew McConaughey is going to play Two-Face, and I think that's incredible casting if you can get the likes of a Matthew McConaughey in to the Batman franchise. But I then worry about him, I think it'd be great in the role, I think it'd be incredible in the role, and it'd be good to see him in a universe like this we haven't, we obviously tried to, with the Dark Tower, they tried to get that universe sort of going. Um, the film was awful. Um, he uh, Playing a two character like Two-Face, obviously someone we saw in the Dark Knight trilogy. We saw his whole origin in that film. Um, obviously that story only lasted that one film. Um, spoiler alert, he dies at the end of that film, so we didn't see anything in him in the Dark Knight Rises. Um, I don't want to see that origin again, we, uh, which I'm worried that we might do with someone. When you got someone like McConaughey in the role, he's gonna he's gonna want more screen time. You're gonna want, um, perhaps to be the big villain of the film. And I don't know too much about the story of the Long Halloween. I am hoping to get it and read it before this film comes out, which I've got a while to do. So I'm not I'm not too worried. I'm pretty sure that I will have read it by the time this film comes out. Um. So maybe that'll answer some more of my questions as to what's going on. Um, uh, perhaps they're setting him up for a sequel. Um, I don't know. This one, like I said, is the least of the confirmed ones. I imagine we will get Two-Face. We've heard that rumour for a while. Um, I think it'd be great. I think it would be. I'm, I'm fingers, fingers across that that will get announced officially that he's got the role. Um the next one we got is that Colin Farrell is uh, in talks to play the Penguin. An interesting choice. Obviously, we know that Jonah Hill was in talks to either play the Riddler or the Penguin, but apparently he was asking for a stupid amount. Um, so, rightly, Warner Brothers has said no, I don't think anyone's going to be like, oh, Jonah Hill's in this, we need to go and see it. And do I think the same about Colin Farrell? Not particularly, but I think I prefer Colin Farrell as an actor. I think he's a really strong actor. I think he was he was probably one of the, if not the only best bit of Daredevil. Um, I think he uh, was great in the first Fantastic Beast and should have continued to be Grindelwald going forward. Um, I think as much as Johnny Depp perhaps isn't bad, I think it's the direction and 
what they did with the character that didn't work. Um, I'm really excited to see Colin Farrell be in this universe, and he's. Uh, I know Tommy's a big fan of uh, Saving Mr. Banks and him in that film. Um, he's one of definitely one of the strongest parts of that film as well. Um, the Penguin's an interesting choice for him, um, but I, it's someone that I have complete faith in. I think he would crush the role. Whether he then decides to put on some a little bit more weight, perhaps a bit more like his character in the lobster sort of size, just with a few more pounds on, or whether they go prosthetics, maybe they, I, I don't know what sort of direction they're going to go. I always have in my mind for this film that they're going to go more towards like the Arkham games, and I'd be all for that and put a long Halloween sort of version in that sort of world. Um, the other casting is someone else in talks. We believe is Andy Circus is gonna is in talks for um, Alfred. Um, obviously, having worked with Matt Reeves before in the Planet of the Apes, the Rise, Dawn, and War, obviously playing Caesar in those films. Obviously, worked with Matt Reeves before, and Andy Circus is incredible. He's obviously a busy man at the moment, working on Venom Two. Um, so I don't particularly think that this would be a big role if he is going to be in the film. Um, yeah, no, I'm really excited. Who can't love Andy Serkis? I think he's incredible. and um, He's one of the best, he seems to be one of the best people, he seems to be a really nice guy from what everyone says as well. Um, and I could just watch the man in anything. He's the, he will now have been in Lord of the Rings, uh, The Hobbit, Star Wars, uh, the Marvel franchises, obviously, and this as well. I think it's just in, incredible. Um, and I think it's not the obvious choice for an Alfred, but I'm I'm definitely interested, and I'm be interested to see what sort of spin they put on the character. We've already heard rumors that Lucius Fox is going to be in it, so maybe that will mean that uh, Alfred won't be as hands-on as the Jeremy Irons Alfred that we got with Ben Affleck. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. Um, I yeah, I'm not particularly expecting a big role from him in any of any of the trilogy or what, however many films they do in this unit. But I think, um, I think it's good. I think that the casting all round for this film has been incredible. And obviously the Batman is such a big character that people want to be in this sort of film and, um, help steer the ship back on, back on track for DC. Um, the next, uh, and that's when we got this, that there's a scream five in the works, not particularly a big surprise. Um, Partly, I kind of felt like I knew this was coming because of the Scream TV show. It did well for the first two seasons, uh, and then we just haven't heard anything about a third one, so it kind of led me to believe that a film was probably going to be in the works. Um, however, I I really don't know what they're going to do with it. I think um, I know Mark Riley spoke about this on Collider Live during the week. Uh, he'd like it to go more in... Uh, I think it's a new nightmare, uh, the nightmare on Elm Street franchise where uh, put put that sort of spin on it as to where um, it would actually be Nev Campbell playing Nev Campbell and someone playing Ghostface, or someone is dressing up as Ghostface, killing all the actors from Scream. I think that'd be fun um, if they do it in that self-referential way, and I think that'd work. Um, again, it's not a surprise given the likes of Halloween doing really well. We're going to see a lot of these franchises, the Friday the 13th, the Nightmare on Elm Street, come back, I think, because of Halloween doing so well at the box office. Um, so it's not a surprise. I'm just worried about what they're going to do with it. Um, Nev Campbell has to come back. Who else you get? I don't know. I, you always love that opening scene with a famous actor or actress coming in and... Um, being the first one killed, and they obviously started that with Drew Barrymore, and I think that's sort of the thing that gets me excited. I think Scream has been sort of the front, and one of the first Scream, especially, is an incredible horror film, one of my favourites, um, just because of how self-referential it is and how good it is. I think it's difficult to do that without the genius that is Wes Craven, but I think it can be done. Um, as I say about Ebony Phil, I think there is, if you get a good team behind it, then anything can work, and I think there perhaps is something here. Um, whether they get that or not, I am a little bit worried about it, given I didn't love Scream 4 or 3, for that matter, as well. 
Um, so I'm interested to see what they do with this going forward. The next announcement is that Fantastic Beasts 3 is... Uh, it, the, I think production is shooting next year. We're going to get more Dumbledore and more Hogwarts in the last one. And a lot of people really didn't like... Uh, the second one, Crimes of Grindelwald, so it's not really a surprise, and people were let down that there wasn't as much Dumbledore and Hogwarts as was led to believe in the trailer. Um, it was a mess, the second one. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. Um, I don't think people care as much about this franchise as they do the Harry Potter. There isn't a... I think it's just a, it's a messy script as a start. I think you needed to choose one thing, either the Fantastic Beasts angle... Or the Dumbledore angle. I don't think they should have done both. And I think in doing that. They've kind of botched both of these interesting stories. That could have worked. Um, but you get, Jude Law is great. I'm glad he's coming back to do more. I think that's the way you go. I think you just make it new. And uh, Dumbledore doing their thing. Going out to stop Grindelwald. And I think that this is the film where it happens. I think this is where they stop Grindelwald in this film. Um and probably tease what goes on to happen in the rest of the Harry Potter franchise with perhaps a young Voldemort, perhaps, I don't know. Um, I don't think anyone cares about this franchise anymore. I th I've said it all along, I think this Harry Potter universe would work really well on TV, and I think there's some really, really interesting stories that they could go down. Um, and I'd really like to see a TV show in this universe, whether they do or not, I don't know. I think there's still a lot of money. This... The fact that this uh, you, uh, trilogy is being cut short, it was supposed to be five films, might mean that they go back to doing Harry Potter and get the Cursed Child out there as a film. I don't know, they might leave that because obviously it does incredibly well on Broadway and wherever else. Um, so I'm really interested to see um, what they do with this franchise. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about it with the just how bad the last one was. Um, but I'm glad they're just kind of wrapping it up and looking to do that. Um, we, were, we were told um, a couple of weeks ago that um, Marvel weren't going to be uh, pursuing Robert Downey Jr. for an Oscar nomination. Um, they lied to us. They came out with a big list of people um, for supporting actor and supporting actresses. Um, and... It's interesting. Uh, there's no one on the list that could get it apart from Robert Downey Jr. I think it'd be nice if he got a nomination. I don't necessarily think he will, but I'd still yet to see quite a lot of these Oscar films that are coming out. Um, that's the most likely. I wouldn't be shocked if he did. I don't know. I'd be glad, glad if he did. He's going to get... Um, I think the people's vote is going to be behind him and Joker and... Um, I, d I don't see why if they if they they've got four I think this is a, is a good one just for the, the what he's done for this universe what he's done for the Marvel universe as soon as the first Iron Man starts he you can tell he is Tony Stark um, and to do that for twenty films I think is incredible and the world loves up Robert Downey Jr. and what he did in this role and how influential he's become and the legacy of this character now I think is incredible and. I think he, they probably does deserve it. I don't think anyone else on this list. I think they find it odd that anyone else <laughs> that is even on the list, especially looking at some of the actors like Zoe Saldana, who's not in it a great deal, Brie Larson, who's in it for f five minutes maybe. Um, I find it really odd that they've done it, but they've also just like, especially like someone like Paul Rudd, I don't know if you can put it on the same level as Robert Downey Jr., or whether they've just gone, we'll just put everyone on this list. Um, yeah. RDJ seems to be the only one that seems to have any sort of chances to getting a nomination. Um, but we'll see. It's a couple months away yet, so we will see. The last headline and the big talking point of the week is that a uh, directing team are uh, uh, producing a film of, set in the Vietnam War uh, about what, after the Vietnam War, about all these dogs that were left there. Um, and they've been trying to do some casting and they've come to the conclusion that um, they've found the right man and that right man 
is James Dune, who died, uh, was it 70 years ago or so, nearly? And you've got... I think this is just insane. I've been thinking about a lot of things this week about this story and why it's okay to do certain things. Like a Grand Moss Tarkin, a character who... I don't know, when I started to think about that, uh, obviously um, the actor who portrayed him in A New Hope is has passed away. And uh, but then when they came to digitally recreate him for Rogue One, A Star Wars Story... There was some backlash just towards it, um, but not a great deal because it makes sense in the story that this character is around. Um, whether the, and if they've got the technology to do it instead of getting an impersonator in, I think that makes sense for that. But to come out and be like, oh, we couldn't find the right person. There isn't a, an actor alive that and working that hasn't that probably hasn't been given a chance to do this sort of thing the person we want is someone who's been dead 60 odd years now um i think is is ludicrous and i to say it's not a marketing ploy is ridiculous it is a gimmick and it'll get people talking and now people are going to be more interested to see this film whether he's in it or not to see whether james dean uh what what they do with it if he is going to be in it. I I really hope they don't and give someone a chance to do that. I don't think it's right to do it in this sort of aspect. We've seen it done a few times with like the Audrey Hepburn advert advert a couple of years ago. Um, I think if you're going to do this sort of thing, I don't think you should write a role and then be like, oh, we couldn't find anyone because James Dean's the right person to do it because you can't do that. I think it'd be really interesting to see like a TV show, perhaps a TV series of um, getting doing these last little things with actors who we don't get to see. And I think that would work. Um, again, but that's just relying on the gimmick. And to say that you can't find someone because James Dean is the right person is just absolutely ridiculous. And I don't think it should be done in this aspect. Um, Star Wars obviously had a tough time doing it, but at the end, this is an established character, and I think that kind of, uh, with the Princess Leia stuff, and General Leia in Rise of Skywalker, they've managed to use old footage that they shot for The Force Awakens, and probably some from The Last Jedi as well. Um, and I think it just opens a really interesting conversation as to where Hollywood is going, and people are their likeness will be in their contracts nowadays with the de-aging stuff and if something happens to them they probably would do that but again like I said if they're an established character in an established universe I think it makes a little bit more sense than going I'm making this brand new film not tied to anything else but say for like the Batman that's coming up you want again this is it's just an example of is James Dean, well, they wanted James Dean to play Alfred. Just an example, that wouldn't be a character that James Dean would play. But that's just, it's just idiot, idiotic. It really is. Because um, there are other people that could do a great Alfred, uh, do a great job playing that character, um, but just haven't been given the chance to. Um, uh, I find it baffling. I really do. I don't know where, uh, I don't know why you think you do this. I really hope they backtrack and give someone a chance, or this film just gets canned, to be honest. Um, let's look at a box office. That was kind of the it for the headlines this week. Some really big stories, some really interesting talking points, um, particularly that, that James Dean one has got the conversation going. Um, I'm sure we'll get more Batman news because we seem to every week. Um, let's go into box office. Um, we had quite a few new big releases this weekend uh midway last christmas playing with fire doctor sleep all came out during the week um uh that i haven't given anything away as far as box office there um uh, but in fifth place this weekend these are all estimates from box office mojo uh in fifth place was T terminator dark fate with 10.8 million 
No, it's it's done really poorly at the box office. I don't think we're going to see a Terminator for a long, long time. I spoke about it quite a lot last week, um, on last week's episode. Uh, in fourth place is Last Christmas. Uh, it's obviously starring Amelia Clark and Henry Golding with eleven point six million. That's just a lot out this weekend. I think it would have done better on a different weekend. Uh, word of mouth's not great around this film either. Um, the next film, Playing with Fire, starring John Cena. With 12.8 million. Um, typical family film. Not surprised that it did uh, that well. That that would have been about where I would have predicted. Uh, in second place, Doctor Sleep with 14.1 million. I'm kind of surprised it didn't do slightly better. I think the film in the first place would have taken some of it. Um, I'm disappointed that it didn't do better. Because it's a really good film as well. And a really good sequel to The Shining. Um, I recommend checking that out. It's probably the strongest film that's out at the moment. Um, and in first place, probably not really a surprise, was Midway with 17.5 million. I was surprised how low it did. Um, I, expect, I probably would have put it down to do a little bit better. Um, but don't go and watch that film, it's boring. Um, let's have a look at what films are coming out during the week. Uh, as I get the list up, Ford vs. Ferrari comes out on November 15th. Charlie's Angels and The Good Liar also come out. Uh, on the 15th as well during the week um, and that's kind of it, you've got some other limited releases but I won't go too much into them they're not going to play into the box office at all um, Good Liar, Charlie's Angels and Ford Rose Ferrari all wide releases um, so you can go and watch those um, and that kind of concludes this week's episode of In Case You Missed It um, please follow us on Instagram at Insider Network on Twitter at Insider Network underscore. Find us on Facebook. If you're listening to us on YouTube, you can also find us on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts. Please go and rate and review. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Let us know what we could do differently. What works for you? What uh, What's some of the strong points? Anyone you'd like for us to try and get, perhaps as a host? What some you just want to see some new people, perhaps? Um, and you can find me at Floodgate Twenty Eight. As I said. Tweet at Tommy, that let him know your opinions on stuff. You ask him some questions. Um, and we will see you next week for the next episode of In Case You Missed It. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>